On the previous video, we talked about fraction and rational expressions. The skills that you got from there, I wish there were, will be applied on the lesson on this video. Some of you may be aspiring to become engineer, especially mechanical engineer. This profession involves working with rates, timing, and sometimes speed and distance. If I'm right then, you should be serious on the next topic that we will be discussing and it's rational equations. Not only engineers, rational equations are also applicable to those who dream to become financial analysts or even become medical researchers, computer and software engineers. Before we explore rational equations, let's take a look again on the objectives of this week. A rational equation is an equation containing at least one fraction or rational expression whose denominator and numerator are polynomials. Skills that you acquired from the previous video will be useful to solve rational equations. For that, let's have some example. Let's say we need to solve 5 over x minus 1 third equals 1 over x so for the first thing to do you need to multiply the whole equation with the LCD or least common denominator so the LCD of our example is 3x so you just need to create a large parenthesis and place the LCD outside on both sides of equation but what is LCD? LCD is a common multiple of every denominator and the easiest way to obtain it is by number 1 expressing each denominator into factored form 2 get all the factored denominator of each 3 remember that do not repeat same denominators then in our example since the expression is already simplified and cannot be factored we should get the denominators and write it like this again we shouldn't repeat same denominator so therefore the LCD will become 3 times x or 3x that's why on our example I used 3x so after getting the LCD, you will distribute it to each of the term of the equation. So 3x times 5x will become 3x times 5 over x. Do not completely multiply it yet. Just stick the denominator to the term multiply. It will help you to solve the equation easily. Next. 3x to negative 1 third again just stick it on the multiplied term and the same for 3x times 1 over x after that cancel common factors on each term resulted from the previous step so on the first term you can cancel x then the remaining expression will be 3 times 5 on the second term you can cancel 3 
then the remaining expression will be negative x times 1. On the last term, you can cancel x, so the remaining expression will be 3 times 1. After cancellation, just simplify, meaning you have to operate each operations required by the equation. So 3 times 5 is 15, negative x times 1 is just negative x, and lastly, 3 times 1 is just 3. So solve now the equation just like what you did during your grade 7 math. Therefore, our x will be 12. So now, let's level it up scale. Here, we need to solve x over x plus 2 plus 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 5 over x plus 3. This example is actually easy than what it looks like. It only consists of a bunch of letters and numbers but if you try it, you can effortlessly understand how it will be going. So here we have a quadratic trinomial unlike the first problem which only has a single variable involved. The steps that you will take are same as on what we have done on the first example. Then, on the first step, we should transform it to factored form. The only expression that could be factored with this one is the denominator of the second term. Apply now those skills you developed on how to factor GQT in order for us to solve this problem. What we have here now is a type 1 GQT, so we will think of factors of 6 that if we add is equal to 5. And that is positive 2 and positive 3 because positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6 and the 2 plus 3 is 5. Therefore, the factors are x plus 2 and x plus 3. Then now, write the rational equation into factored form. So, we have now x over x plus 2 plus 2 over x plus 2 x plus 3 equals 5 over x plus 3. Then get the LCD or the least common denominator. So again, just stick all the denominator together but do not repeat same denominators. Therefore, the LCD will be x plus 2 and x plus 3. After that, distribute LCD to each side. So you have to draw a big parenthesis and closing the whole equation. Or sometimes if you have having a hard time to understand what I am saying, you can write parentheses in each of the side of the equation like what I did here. So on the left side of the equation, distribute x plus 2, x plus 3 to x over x plus 2 first. Again, do not multiply completely, just stick them out together. So it will become x plus 2, x plus 3 times x over x plus 2. Next will be the LCD to the second term which will result to x plus 2 plus x plus 3, 2 over x plus 2, x plus 3. Lastly, on the right side, again, the LCD will be distributed to 5 over x plus 3, which will yield 2x plus 2x plus 3, 5 over x plus 3. Then, cancel out common factors on numerator and denominator of each term. So, on the first one, we can cancel x plus 2, then the remaining expression will be x plus 3 times x. On the second term, we can cancel x plus 2 and x plus 3, thus it will result to positive 2. 
always carry out the sign. On the right side, we can cancel x plus 3, so the remaining expression will be x plus 2 times 5. Next, you will simplify to remove all grouping symbols or parentheses. So since x is multiplied to a binomial, we will again distribute. But this time, we should multiply it completely. x times x is x squared and x times 3 is 3x. So the result is x squared plus 3x. Bring down positive 2 because we didn't operate with this one. 5x is 5 times x and 5 times 2 is 10. Unlike the first example, what we achieved here is a quadratic equation. So since we have a squared, we need to transpose all terms to the left and we shouldn't leave any number on the one side of the equation except 0. Since we have transposed the value from the right side to the left, 5x will change to negative 5x and 10 will become negative 10. That's a grade 7 math. After that, combine all similar terms. Negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x. And 10 combined with 2 is negative 8. So we have now an equation of x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Solving quadratic equations need a formula especially if the problem goes with real life situations. But here we have a factorable expression on the left side. Hence we can solve it by using factory. Again this is a GQT type 1. so. Think of factors of negative 8 that sums up to negative 2. Thus, our factor will be x plus 2, x minus 4. You can check it out on your own to determine if I got the right answers. For this, we need to separate them into two solutions. This was supported by a math concept called ZPP or Zero Product Property. Which means if you have a product of 0, one of the factors or both of the factors could be 0. Basically, we just have to equate both of the factors to 0. That is x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. So on the left, we have x plus 2 equals 0. Just transpose the 2 to obtain x. The answer will be negative 2. On the other side, we have x minus 4 equals 0, transpose, and then we obtain x as 4. These two answers are yet to be verified because on some cases, one of them cause abnormalities with the equation. When we say abnormalities, these are cases that makes the equation undefined. Remember that we can obtain undefined terms on math if we will divide a number by 0. So in our example, we just need to find which of our answer, negative 2 or 4, could affect our equation to become 0. So I need you to pause the video and then evaluate the equation using negative 2 and 4. When I say evaluate, back on the lesson 2 of week 1 that means substitution so you need to substitute negative 2 and 4 to all x of the equation you will not do it at the same time meaning substitute negative 2 first then check the answer before doing the same for 4 you can use original given or on simpler way, you can use the factored form for this. So now, pause the video and try. Actually, by looking at it, we can easily identify which solution causes undefined on our equation. 
and that is negative 2. Why? It is because we have a factor of x plus 2 on our denominator. Thus, if we substitute negative 2, it will result to 0 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. It will become undefined automatically because you cannot have a denominator of 0. On this case, negative 2 is called an extraneous solution. This means that by solving the equation, you got an answer that also makes the equation undefined.